this video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on liquidation of companies, corporate accounting. I want to solve one sum on liquidation of companies. Just observe the sum that I intend to solve here before you. This is the sum which I wish to explain and solve here before you. Rajiv Limited went into voluntary liquidation when its position was as under. 2 lakh liquidity shares, 10 each, 8 per share paid up, so 80% share capital is paid up. Face value 10, 8 paid up, so 80% of the face value is being paid up. 3 lakh equity shares, 10 each, 5 per share paid up. So another equity share, which are 50% paid up. So this 2 lakh equity shares, 80% paid up. This 3 lakh equity shares, 50% paid up. 15% debentures, 4 lakhs. Fully secured creditors, 2 lakh 86,000. Preferential creditors, 1 lakh. Liquidation expenses, 4,000. Liquidators remuneration was 60,000. Is rupees 60,000. Rupees 30,000 for realized realization of asset at 2.5%. So whatever the assets are realized, multiplied by 2.5%, you will get the liquidator's remuneration that is 30,000. So 30,000 is 2.5% of assets realized. And 30,000 for payment of unsecured creditors inclusive of preferential creditors at the rate of 5%. So whatever the payment is made to preferential creditors and unsecured creditors, on that payment 5% remuneration is payable to the liquidator and that 5% is equal to this 30,000. So here liquidator's remuneration details 60,000 rupees are given. On the basis of that, we are required to find out the value of as the assets realized value and payment made to unsecured creditors and preferential creditors. So on the basis of this, we can find out the assets realized. Prepare liquidator's final statement of receipts and payment. So we are, the missing item is how much are the unsecured creditors, how much are the preferential, preferential creditors are already given to you, but how much are the unsecured creditors, that information is missing. At the same time, what is the total realized value of asset that is also not given to us, that we can find out on the basis of this information. I am required to prepare a liquidator statement, final statement of receipts and payment. Now, liquidator is a person appointed in a process of winding up. Winding up is a process by which the existence of a company is brought to an end and it is a legal process. And to entertain that legal process, a person appointed is known as liquidator. Liquidator has to realize all the assets of the company and has to apply the realized value of assets as required by the law. That means payment has to be made as prescribed by law. What is the prescription? First payment is to be made to fully secured creditors. Next payment is to be made to liquidation expenses and liquidators remuneration. Then preferential creditors. Then debenture holders having floating charge over the assets of the company. Then you are required to pay unsecured creditors, then preference shareholders, and then equity shareholders. This is the sequence in payment is to be made, and we are required to prepare liquidator statement in light of this sequence in payment. Now let me start with that. So here I prepare liquidator statement, receipts and payment. It's a statement. I should start with opening cash balance, which is not given to me in the sum. I am not given opening cash balance. At the same time, the Realized value of asset is given to me in the sum in an indirect manner. Let me work out the realized value of assets. So, this is the point that I will consider. Liquidator's remuneration is 60,000. I prepare a working note. Liquidator's remuneration is 60,000. It is made of two components. 30,000 is on the realized value of asset. So how 2.5% of the assets realized is equal to 30,000? 
So assets realized multiplied by 2.5 percent is equal to 30,000. So what is the value of asset realized? To find out the value of asset realized, asset realized is equal to 30,000 divided by 2.5 percent, 12 lakhs is the realized value of assets. So this is given to me, the assets realized 12 lakhs, this information is given to me in a sum in an indirect manner. Now after 60, this is 30,000. 30,000, 5% of the amount paid to unsecured creditors including preferential creditors. So amount paid to unsecured creditors multiplied by 5% is equal to 30,000. Remember preferential creditors are also commanding a status of unsecured creditors and those unsecured creditors are given a priority payment right as per law. That's why they are known as preferential creditors. So preferential creditors are basically in substance unsecured creditors but by operation of law they are given priority. So here I have written amount paid to unsecured creditors means it, it includes preferential creditors. So amount paid to unsecured creditors is equal to 30,000 divided by 5% 6 lakhs. So this is the payment made to all unsecured creditors including preferential creditors 6 lakhs. So how much are the let me bifurcate the preferential creditors given to me in the sum is 1 lakh. So unsecured creditors other than preferential creditors will be 5 lakhs. So 6 lakhs minus 1 lakh it should be 5 lakhs. This is how the indirect information, the information which I wanted, which I required for the purpose of preparing liquid statement, statement is being worked out by preparing this working note. Let me start now. Assets realized 12 lakhs. Payment made to creditors including preferential creditors 6 lakhs. So 6 lakhs are left with us. So from that 6 lakhs we have paid debenture holders 4 lakh, fully secured creditors 2 lakhs 86,000 and liquidators expenses 4,000. So 12 lakhs minus 6 lakhs, 6 lakhs are the surplus with us. From that we are required to pay, make payment more than 6 lakhs that is 4 lakh plus 2 lakh 86,000 plus 4,000 so payment is to be made more than 6 lakhs means we are required to demand last call from the equity shareholders and after demanding the money from equity shareholders then and then we will be in a position to pay the unsecured creditors. That's an important point to be noticed by the student just by observing facts so far. So 12 lakhs so I don't have sufficient funds to pay the unsecured creditors if I give payment in priority to fully secured candidates, debenture holders and preferential payments. But the deficit shortage for payment of unsecured candidates will be met by demanding last call from the equity shareholders. As I told to you, the first type of equity shareholders are 80% paid up. Second type of equity shares are paid up less than that. So we can demand the last call from these equity shareholders and the revenue cash received from last call from the equity shareholders that will be applied for payment of unsecured creditors. That's an important point to be noticed. Now, first payment is to be made to fully secured creditors. Then liquidators remuneration. Liquidation expenses and liquidators remuneration. Liquidators remuneration is 60,000. You know it, but I bifurcate it. 2.5% on 12 lakhs. 12 lakhs into 2.5%. That is 30,000. This 30,000. Then 5% of the payment to preferential creditors, 5% payment to other unsecured creditors that is 5 lakhs. The moment I will pay I will record. Then I am required to pay preferential creditors first of all in priority. So 1 lakh into 5% remuneration will be paid immediately. So preferential creditors are paid so liquidators remuneration is also paid simultaneously. Now after preferential creditors, I am required to pay to debenture holders. Debenture holders are 4 lakhs. After making payment to debenture holders, I can make payment to unsecured creditors that is 5 lakhs. So I don't have funds but I am told in the sum that unsecured creditors are already paid and the remuneration they are on is uh, paid to the liquidator. So I pay unsecured creditors. I know that I don't have sufficient funds, but I know that I'm going to demand last call from the equity shareholders 
to make up the deficit for payment to unsecured creditors. So on Filex 5%, so this is how 60,000. Now let me find out how much is the shortage of cash and how much amou amount I should demand by way of last call. That, that is the crucial point now to be decided. So on the basis of that, I am given 2 lakh equity shares, 80% paid up. 3 lakh equity shares, 50% paid up. So these are 80% paid up, these are 50% paid up. So what I can do? I am going to prepare memoranda cash account for your better understanding as an alternative way of calculation. But at present, let me find out 12 lakhs. Minus all these payments are made other than unsecured creditors. That works out to be cash balance of 350,000. So if I, before making payment to unsecured creditors, I hold a balance of 350,000. Unsecured creditors are 5 lakhs. I have got only 350,000. There is a shortage of 150,000. That shortage of 150,000 is to be demanded by way of last call from these shareholders. Now these 3,000 equity shares are there. They are 50% paid up. If they are to be made 80% paid up, so on these shares I am required to demand 3 rupees just to make them at par with these 2 lakh equity shares. So on 3 lakh equity shares, if I demand at the rate of rupees 3 per share, so 3 lakh into 3, I will get 9 lakhs rupees. Do I require 9 lakhs rupees to make payment to fully secured candidates? I require only 1 lakh 50,000 shortage. I have got a balance of 3 lakh 50,000. Unsecured candidates are 5 lakhs. I have got a deficit of 1 lakh 50,000. So if I demand 3 rupees just to make them at par with rupees 8, then I will get 9 lakhs. I will have a surplus. So I should find out how much amount should I demand from this type of equity shares and how the peri pasu distribution occurs in case of these two types of equity shares. One is 80% paid up and second is 50% paid up. For that, I prepare a memoranda cash account. What is the style of memoranda cash account? See, I write a balance of 3 lakh 50,000. From that, I am required to pay a 5 lakhs creditors. Now for that I am required to demand calls from the shareholders. Assume that, presume that, nostrally I have demand all the entire amount of last call from all the types of shareholders. This is a presumption. So in this 2 lakh equity share I have demanded to be 2. So I got 4 lakhs. On 3 lakh shares I have demanded 5 rupees per share. So I got 15 lakhs. So this is the total cash that can be available maximum. Out of that, 5 lakhs are paid to the unsecured candidates. How much cash balance is left to me? So 2 lakh 20, 2 lakh 50 thousand minus 5 lakhs, the cash balance available to me is 22 lakh 50 thousand minus 5 lakhs is the cash available to me. That available cash is after payment to unsecured candidates that can be distributed to this 5 lakh shareholders. So if it is distributed amongst 5 lakh shareholders, how much refund I should make per share? So refund per share. So 7 lakh 50 thousand divided by 5. So 3.5, 35% refund is to be made. So if the shares are fully paid up, 100% paid up, then 35% refund has to be made. So on these shares, which are 80% paid up, if they are made, made up, if they are made fully paid up, 100% paid up, then I am required to give them a refund of 35%. So they are required to pay only, they are going to lose in case of liquidation only 65% of the share capital. So 10 rupees share, 65% they are going to lose. So 6.5 is the loss that they have to sustain in case of liquidation. They have already paid 80%. So 80% minus 65%, that is the amount. So 1.5 is to be refunded on these 2,000 equity shares. And these equity shares are 50% and they are required to suffer a loss of 65%. So they are required to contribute 15% for their capital. So 3 lakh into 1.5 is the amount to be demanded. The same calculation. Now see, this is 100% paid. I am required to give a, this alternative way. I am required to refer 3.5 per share. 
So on 2,000 shares, 3.5 refunded, that refund amounts to 7 lakhs. On 3 lakh shares, 3.5 refunded, so 9 lakhs is the refund. So what has happened? No stall calls, imaginary calls, calls made from a 4 lakhs. Refund, no stall refund, 7 lakhs. So 4 lakhs has demanded and 7 lakhs are to be paid. So net amount, 3 lakhs are to be paid. So on 2 lakh shares, at least 1.5 per share, at least 1.5 per share, the refund is to be made. So on this A type of shareholders, 7 lakhs is the payment, 4 lakhs is the receipt. So net payment 7 lakhs is to be made to A type of shareholders. So they are to be paid 3 lakhs. On B type of share, I am demanding 15 lakhs and giving them 10 lakh 50,000. So 15 lakh minus 10 lakh 50,000 is the amount that I am supposed to demand from them. So I have demanded from them 4 lakh 50,000. So 4 lakh 50,000 demanded, 3 lakhs are paid. So 1 lakh 50,000 was the shortage for payment of unsecured creditors that is being met. So second type of B type of shareholders have given me 4 lakh 50,000. From that shortage of 1 lakh 50,000 for payment of unsecured creditors is being made and the remaining 3 lakhs are refunded to A type of equity shareholders. By this way very partial distribution, equitable distribution, what has happened? Both the type of equity shareholders have lost only 65% of the face value of the share. So if they have paid up more than 65%, the amount will be refunded. If they have paid less than 65%, that is 50%, then they are required to pay a last call. This is how the working is made. If you make a total of receipts and payment, it will be 16 lakh 50,000. This is how my liquidator statement totals agree. So this is one more sum that has been explained to you. I have tried to explain you this sum. I feel that you have followed all these things. The important point in this sum that last call from one category of shareholder is demanded to make payment to the unsecured creditors as well as to make the payment to those shareholders who has contributed more as compared to the other. So I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.